The first week is gonna be rough. It is, okay? If you're coming off of keto, it's going to take you some time to get carb adapted again. But exactly how much time, okay? Because you're bringing carbs back into the diet. There's different mitochondrial cellular machinery now being at work. How long does it take for the cells to like understand it's time to use carbohydrates again? Well, let's break down some very simple research because it's actually quite basic when you look at it and this will help you out in the grand scheme of things. So I'm a big fan of a cyclical ketogenic diet where you do keto for a few months and then you cycle off and you have carbohydrates. But there's a transition period and sometimes like you don't feel very good when you're first coming off of keto and introducing carbs. And even if you are doing this just like one time a week, for example, like a lot of times if you're having a cheat meal or something like that, you don't feel very good. Now, you would expect this to occur if you were doing keto and then you had like a pie. You ate, you know, a blackberry pie plus, I don't know, some chocolate gold to blooms or something. But if you were to eat a sweet potato, you probably shouldn't feel that way, right? It's still a healthy carb. But the fact is, is like, I recognize it with me. It's like, if I do keto for a long period of time and then I go and I have even the healthiest of carbohydrates after abstaining from them for a long time, I get like a carb hangover. Like what the heck is going on? Well, it's purely glucose intolerance and it takes some time. So let's break down what's happening. After this video, can you please check out Thrive Market? They're an online membership-based grocery store. So whether you're doing keto or you're coming off of keto and experimenting with like more paleo foods while you're off keto, they have it for you. That's what I love about them. I can sort by category. So while I'm on keto, I can sort the ketogenic foods that I get delivered to my doorstep. When I'm off keto, I can sort paleo and get the paleo type foods that I want. If I'm ever doing any different kind of exploration with different diets, like vegan or vegetarian, I can sort by, it just, it makes my shopping easy, but most of all, I'm a father of two, I'm busy, I don't have time to go to the grocery store all the time. It just makes it super easy to get it delivered to my doorstep. So there's a link down below that you can check out, plus you'll get 25% off of a membership and you'll get a free gift when you use that link down below. So big thank you to Thrive Market for the last few years of support on this channel and making this all possible. The first thing we have to address is what is called mitochondrial half-life. We talk about fat adaptation all the time, but what about carb adaptation? <laughs> it's kind of funny because the whole world is so carb adapted, or at least the Western world, or at least the US, so carb adapted, we only recognize fat adaptation as an anomaly. But I think the tide is turning where, at least, at least on this channel, I have close to 3 million subscribers that are really interested in keto and fasting, we're largely fat adapted. So now the anomaly is being carb adapted. So how long does it take to get carb adapted? Well, the mitochondria, which is where we manufacture energy within our cell, well, that receives energy from our fuel, from our food, and it turns it into, of course, you know, usable energy, ATP within our bodies. So the mitochondria has to go through what is called a half-life. Okay, a mitochondria, so I'm gonna really simplify this, but basically the mitochondria has a life cycle. And when it goes through a life cycle, it dies and it's sort of reborn with daughter mitochondria. That is considered a half-life, okay? That means that the mitochondria, and it has its own DNA, so it changes as time goes on. Now, in the world of fat adaptation, we, we know this, right? You go into keto for a while and it takes a few weeks for your body to get fat adapted because the mitochondria has to go through different life cycles to get adapted to fat, okay? Well, it takes one to two weeks for each half-life of the mitochondria. And what that means is it takes one to two weeks for the one life cycle of mitochondria before it gives birth and has another mitochondria. On average, it takes five to six half-lives before we reach equilibrium. And what that means is before we have a complete turning of the tides, before the, by the time the pendulum swings completely to the other side, we've gone through five or six life cycles of the mitochondria. Now, if you factor that in, you have one to two weeks, okay, with each life cycle. So we're looking at around five to seven weeks for adaptation to fats. Well, the good news is, it's about the same with carbohydrates too. The difference is, most of us have been so, just like from an epidemiological standpoint, adapted to carbohydrates through our entire lives, we probably develop carbohydrate machinery faster than we develop fat metabolism machinery because by and large, the lion's share of our lives have been using copious amounts of carbohydrates. Okay, I've only been doing keto for 10 years and I know there's a lot of people that are just learning about it on this channel over the last couple of years. So by far, the vast majority of your life has been utilizing carbohydrates. So you have deeply rooted epigenetic just favoring for those carbohydrates. So 
we know that fat adaptation takes about five to six weeks in terms of mitochondrial like adaptation, but carbohydrates, we could probably get more of that benefit after like three or four weeks. Now I've done videos specifically talking about how to expedite this and accelerate that carb utilization, throwing a few of them out there like uh, high intensity interval training is going to be a very, very effective way to do it. Also uh, keeping snacking to a minimum is a very effective way to allow the body to properly utilize those kinds of things. But also periodically having higher glycemic carbohydrates so that your body has no choice but to deal with an acute spike and deal with it and really force insulin production that your body has to use. But I don't wanna get into crazy detail with that. I wanna talk more about the timing. The other piece is microbial diversity. This is very important when it comes down to glucose tolerance. So when we are on keto, what ends up happening is we actually end up with somewhat limited, I don't wanna say limited diversity, but limited volume, right? We have still a good amount of diversity, but limited amount of bacteria because we're not feeding it with tons and tons of starches. So even though our diversity can be improved on a ketogenic diet, the number of actual bacteria, not the number of species, but the physical number of bacteria decreases. This doesn't really affect us negatively, but we probably end up lacking some of the bacteria that's associated with glucose tolerance because it's not really needed as much. Then as we introduce carbs back into the equation, our gut bacteria might diversify a bit more and increase in volume giving us more ability to deal with glucose. Well, again, when you look at bacteria, you're usually looking at probably like three, four, five days to really get good change in your bacteria. And then over the course of a couple of weeks, it's going to improve even more. So that kind of further confirms you're looking like two, three, four weeks to get into that carb adaptation phase. So if you're coming off keto, you really do need to give it like three or four weeks of a good solid try to see if you start feeling good again. Now, what's funny is I've recognized this. When I come off of keto, I go through a period of time where I just feel like dog do. I just feel terrible, right? What I know I'm, what am I, five years old, dog do? But seriously, I feel like garbage, okay? And then I slowly start getting better and about three weeks in, I reach a sweet spot where I actually feel like I'm starting to metabolize and utilize carbs properly again. Time goes on, that stays for a couple of weeks and then I actually start to feel kind of like I used to when I was 300 pounds again. I'm like, oh God, I'm not doing good with these carbs. I'm starting to crave going back into keto, craving all of that. And I'd say like after like six, seven weeks of being on carbs, I am so ready to be done with carbs. And I go back to keto and I feel really good. And then I have a little bit of an adaptation, but my body is so fat adapted, I actually get back into keto pretty quick, okay? So the point is, is it takes a few weeks. Do not throw in the towel if you're trying carb cycling because you have to know that you probably have some inherent some con subconscious addiction to keto because it feels so good. You can still feel good with carbs. You just have to know when to weave it back and forth and know how much to give your body. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.